In a previous video, I talked about a video card potential for my 286 system. And I have this blog post that corresponds with it. As I've been going through that, kind of thinking through my choices, uh, first choice I have to figure out is am I going to use this card as an 8-bit data bus or as a 16-bit data bus? So is it an 8-bit card or a 16-bit card? And I think the uh, conclusion I've come to is that I really do want to update the card to be a 16-bit card. And in this blog post, I do have some additional commentary about that. And I've posted the updated schematic and, and some of the logic behind it. And I'm just going to walk through this real quickly. So if any of you see some things that are really standing out as not sounding right, I'd love to, to get additional better ideas uh, as I move forward. When I get into this 16-bit uh, versus 8-bit, I found this graphic in a book that I'm reading. It talks about data bus steering logic. And that's an option that I considered is for my processor to access my video card purely in an 8-bit way. And anytime I'm basically needing to, to use the upper or the odd addresses, I'm going to have to steer that odd address data back through uh, this data bus steering logic. Uh, that didn't sound like a real great idea and and I understand it's there for backwards compatibility most likely but I have the option to go with a 16-bit bus instead and that way I don't have to worry about this type of steering logic so that's what I'm going to get into here as a reminder I'm going to be using this address space right here and what I'm going to do is talk a little bit more about that address space and how I'm going to use it on the the physical card itself had a really nice suggestion on YouTube was to maybe overlap my video and ROM space and treat the ROM as the read aspect of it and the video as the write aspect of it. Uh, and I think that that could work for me and uh, is a really cool idea. And I think I'm going to leverage that idea in projects in the future, having two different devices in the same address, one for read and one for write. For my current card, I am going to leave it as a full read write for the memory address. Uh, the, the data in that video card and I'll, I'll maybe talk a little bit more about that coming up. Uh, this is what the current video card looks like. I have fully routed this and so this is actually ready to be ordered at this point if I don't find additional mistakes with it. So I'm going to be working on that in the coming days uh, maybe over thanks, US Thanksgiving here I can digest some turkey and, and kind of review this schematic and see see what I'm missing that I haven't thought about up to this point. But right now I want to talk about maybe the how I'm going to access these four video chips. So if I take a look at what those four chips are representing, it it is a set of four dual port static RAMs, and each one is 32 kilobytes. So 32K times 8. So every address has a single byte available at it. And that'll give me a pair of 64K segments essentially for a total of 128k that I'll be able to use on this video card. In my previous design I didn't worry about low or high byte or anything like that. I was working on a 65816 so everything was just basically 8-bit data. Uh, but now I need to think about how do I, I do that with a 16-bit type of processor like the 286. So I'm pairing up these static RAMs. So there'll be a low and a high for each of those two 64K regions. So in the lower 64K starting at A0000, I'll have a pair, one for the low, one for the high. I'll do that same thing for what's starting at 0B0000. I'll have the low and the high pair. Then I have to think about how am I going to actually access this and there's two things I have to think about. There's the processor itself is going to have to access this dual port memory and the video card internals or the VGA out is what I'm calling it also has to access that memory. As far as the 286 is concerned it's just going to see this as RAM. It's going to be able to write to it and read from it and basically I am planning to uh, support writing to uh, the memory and reading it back in a way that I might store things in memory on the video card that I want to read back. For example, I might have sprite data that I want to copy a block of, of bytes or pixels from one location to another location, move those bytes essentially. 
It also ends up that out of this memory space, I really only need 96 kilobytes for the resolution that I'm running, which is this 320 by 240 by one byte per pixel for color data. So that gives me 32K of extra. Now I could have trimmed down my memory by 32K. I, I didn't choose to approach it that way. I wanted to kind of keep these obviously in pairs for the low and high. So it ends up I've got 32K spare and I'm gonna use that for maybe caching sprite data or I could even just use it as general memory available to the 286 processor. So I wanna keep the read write on the RAM for the 286 access. Now as far as the VGA out, I marked it as RAM here, but basically it's it's really ROM. I guess it's only going to read it. It's not going to write anything back to the memory. And so if I want to draw a screen from the processor, I'll basically come into the video RAM and jump to the pixels I want to change and set new values for their their pixel data, their color. And then on the VGA out, it has a horizontal and a vertical sync set of counters that basically is running through just constantly scanning through that ram through every address and painting it out to my vga output or drawing it and so as the 286 changes pixel data the vga out vga out uh, will read that pixel data and write it out to the output uh, someone had commented previously that there is potential contention with that even with dual port ram if i'm in the process i believe of writing some memory and the vga tries to read that exact same spot at the exact same time i'm going to have a problem now i've been running this card at high speed in my 65816 build and and every once in a while i'll see a pixel that doesn't get drawn correctly but it's pretty rare and it's really not even noticeable when it does happen so I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm going, to, I'm going to queue that up for a future design update of how to better handle those types of conflicts. But for now, I'm just going to assume that I can write to memory and read from memory, write from the left side, read from the right side. And if I get a periodic a spare pixel that doesn't quite look right, I'm, I'm really not going to worry about it at this point. So all of this is using 16-bit, 16 16-bit 16 in, I've updated my ISA connector, the, the blade connector essentially on the card to read all 16 data bits off the bus. Uh, the VGA out, I've updated that. It really isn't technically going to use 16-bit on the way out. It's going to read through the data chunk by chunk. Uh, and when I say chunk by chunk, I should say byte by byte. So it's going to read one byte at a time because every byte corresponds to a pixel. And I, I only want to draw single pixels. I don't want to have to draw pairs of pixels all the time. Uh, and I didn't want to make the, the decode logic too, too unnecessarily complicated on that. So I thought maybe I could jump in and just walk through some of the things I've done in the schematic. And if anybody has thoughts, uh, do, do share with me. So here is the schematic. And let me start out just with a high level overview. In the upper left, this is where my ISA, basically that blade connector, the edge connector, I guess is what we should call it on the card will plug into the ISA slot providing the appropriate signals. I then have some logic that will help me control to which one of these memory dual port static RAMs will the processor be communicating with. In other words, it's decode logic. And then all of this to the upper right has to do with, with generating my, my signals for horizontal and vertical sync uh, for the actual video output. So part of that is a clock and the clock drives some counters and those counters drive other counters. And I have a, a pair of PLDs that just help make sure I get the right sync signal set at the right time. And all of this counter data I can pull out as addressing information. And so that helps me understand that as those counters are counting up, what address should I be reading out of the, the memory below to put into basically a, a flip-flop or hold it somehow in this here, this 74, 273, before it goes out of my VGA connector. And then I do have some just resistor arrays, some SIPs, uh, both on the incoming data and address and also on the internal data and address. Those maybe are optional. I did find that they were helpful on my, my previous video cards, so I imagine I will still continue to use those. So maybe what is interesting is, is to jump into this decode logic here coming in. And this is the, the logic that I've essentially kind of come in with. 
So I need to make sure that my video memory is functional for these addresses, A0000 up through BFFFF. And so I'm gonna, from a, the last video I just posted not long ago, I talked about, uh, I need to make sure A19 is one, A18 is zero, and A17 is one. That tells me I'm within the video space. I can then use A16, and when A16 is a zero, I know I'm in that bottom 64K of memory of my 128K of the video RAM. And when A16 is a one, I'm in the upper. And then I'm also gonna look at A0 and BHE. And when A0 equals zero, I should be in the low byte within a pair of those RAMs. And when BHE is zero, I'm in the high byte of those pair of RAMs. And so now I wanna be able to support that I can write to the low byte, I can write to the high byte, I can write to both bytes simultaneously. I could write a word or read back, low byte, high byte, or the full word. And so this is the logic I've come in here and done uh, to get that. I have an inverter. It's just inverting A18 and A16. Uh, I then have a four input NAND. And basically I'm, I'm checking is A19 high, A18 low, A17 high, A16 low. And then I do the same thing over here except for I'm looking for A16 high. And then I jump over here and um, this is an OR that I'll use this as input to in just a second. So let me uh, come back to this. On the NAND gate, if this to the left is true, if that all matches, then that's going to pull this video enable for vid0 down. And over to the right, again, the difference there is I'm looking at A16 instead of A16 low. Uh, then video1 enable will be low. And the vid1 and vid0, that's just what I'm referring to, these two, the lower 64K and the upper 64K. So the lower 64K I'll refer to as vid0, vid upper 64K is vid1. This is helping me determine which of those 64K regions am I in based on the address that it is being written or uh, read from. Uh, then I had to put in some logic that took into account the, the A0 and the BHE. So for the vid0, I'm coming in here and, and taking into account the A0 and the BHE as far as if I'm going to enable the individual chip within the pairs of chips. So if I know that I'm doing a, a read or a write to the first 64K, A0 and BHE will tell me should one or the other or both of these be outputting uh, or reading in data uh, as far as making changes. And if I zoom into just a pair of these for a second then to see what that kind of looks like, on the left pair, this let's say is my lower 64K, uh, I'm going to use this mem read and mem write coming from the processor or basically from the, the, the system, the 286 system I should say. And then I now have a vid0 low and a vid0 high active low enable. And that's what's coming out of this OR gate. And so I'm saying that if my video zero is enabled and A zero is zero, those are both zeros, um, my output would be a zero. So that would be enabled. But if I'm at one or I'm at vid one, or well, vid zero is not enabled, uh, then I would output a high and I would not activate that specific chip. And same thing down here. I'm now looking for vid zero enable to be low and I'm looking for BHE to be low and that would then tell me that I'm trying to read the upper byte. And if they're both true, then I'm trying to read the full word. And so then here you see the vid0 low, next chip over here to the right, vid0 high. So that's my low and my high. Uh, the left side of it here, what you're seeing is really my 286 accessing the memory. And so I just repeat this through the other chip and then the other pair of chips. This pair over here, I'm using vid1 low and vid1 high as my signals whether or not these chips should be uh, enabled. And then the mem read and mem write will tell me uh, if I am outputting or if I am writing if, if they are low. So that takes care of the processor getting to the memory. Now I have to make sure that when I come up to my circuit in the upper right, which has to do with uh, generating the video output, so my all my sync signals, and then fetching the byte data to put into 
these resistors that will go out to my VGA card. So I had to put a little logic there. Now, as these counters are counting up, they're building these addresses for me. So VA, I'm calling it video address zero up through 14, and now I've added a video address 15. And so just think of this as just constantly going from the first address, address 0000, to 0001, and it just keeps on uh, climbing up based on this uh, clock that's running for the pixel clock, which is at 12 point, roughly six megahertz. So this is the logic I put down here. Basically, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna look at uh, VQ8 and VQ8, just uh, maybe I should be more clear on that. Uh, VQ8 is, it would be like a VA16, so it's the next address up, it'd be address 16. Um, but I'm gonna look at that along with the, the very first address, which is VA0. So VA0 is gonna tell me, am I reading an even or an odd? And basically, as I'm reading an even or an odd, that along with understanding what I'm at for an address, am I in the lower or upper 64K? So which 64K am I in, the lower or the upper? And am I reading a, an even bit or an odd bit? Um, plus, I have to make sure that I currently have RAM output enabled. And that is coming from some basic logic up here. But if RAM is enabled and it's an even or an odd and I'm in the lower or the upper 64K, then I'm gonna enable one of the four chips and read a byte out of it. And so these four chips down below then uh, have a vid out, either zero low, zero high, one low, one high. And I can now come down and look at these chips and you'll see that all of the outputs when it comes to the IO pins are tied to the exact same Eight, eight data bits on my video internal bus. So it's an eight, eight bit internal bus essentially. And I'm enabling one of the four chips based on that logic up above. Whereas my external data bus, you notice I have on one chip the low byte and on the next chip the high byte. So the processor is gonna see this treated as full 16 bit. In my previous graphic that said, you know, the, the video card is reading the 16-bit, it's really doing it in an 8K fashion, uh, basically pixel by pixel. So maybe I should have labeled that as, as an 8-bit and not 16-bit. But it has to read all of the 16-bit data, of course, across a pair of memory chips and across both 64K sections of memory. So that's about it. And uh, I just thought I'd put that out there and see if anybody's catching anything that I'm missing. You know, the things for me I gotta be careful about. Am I looking at the right address? Uh, so A16, A18, uh, A19. You know, am I decoding this right? I, I've gone through it. Uh, I still need to go through it one more time just to really, really check the details. But I think this is pretty close. You know, as far as the ISA bus that's coming in, I do have you know, all my address signals here that I'm gonna be using. I have my data lines that I'm gonna be using, the, the low byte, the high byte. I'm bringing in BHE, I've got this SMEM R and W. And then I also have um, up here, and this looks like I have a typo, which I'm gonna fix while I'm here. I have a uh, mem write and a mem read. My understanding is that this pair down here, the SMEM read and write, is if you're in the first meg of memory, you should be using that one to, as an indicator. And then this one, I suppose, is for any address in the, in the further uh, address space. So I have a little bit to figure out with that. I think for now on my system board, I'm just sending the same signal to both of these. So that's not quite right, but I think that's how I'm gonna start out with that on my 286 motherboard because I am only using the one meg, which would be just this. I suppose I could just leave these connected, disconnected up here. So that's where I'm at. Uh, I need to do another round of proofing, but if that all turns out okay, that means that I can get over here into my, my card and get that ordered up. I did also just clean up some, some physical layout stuff and I probably need to go through and do some just clean up of the silk screens and things too, but this is what it's looking like. And again, if I go to a 3D view of the latest flavor of this, um, you know, pretty close to what I already just showed you before. So that that's where I'm at. So if you have any thoughts on this, if I'm 
not thinking of something correctly, please let me know. But that is where I'm at. And I will probably get this card ordered up in the next uh, week or so. Just because it will take a month to get it. Uh, I just go with the slowest, cheapest shipping at this point. And in that month, I can make sure I can get my 286, the actual system board running. I know I'm going to have a bunch of uh, wires to run on that because I've been changing the design a fair amount since I, I ordered those PCBs. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.